The message you're about to listen to is by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. Subject of authority. Everyone see authority? Yeah, we're looking at some of believers' authority. And I think this is the third week that we have been looking at this. Hallelujah. Now, turn your Bibles with me. Then Luke's Gospel, chapter number 10. And verse 19. Now, what does it say there? It says, Behold, I give unto you your what? Power. Are we there? Are we there? Thank you, Lord. Then Luke 10 and 19. What does it say quickly? Behold, I give unto you what? Power. To tread upon what? Serpents. And upon what? And a church. Now, what's going on? You know, we are going to read this thing together by fire, by force. So can we read it one to go? It says what? Behold, I give unto you what? Power. To tread on what? Serpents and scorpions. And over what? All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by what? Any means hurt you. Christianity is an introduction into authority. It is a religion of authority. You cannot be a Christian and not have authority because the moment you believe in Jesus, authority is handed over to you. That word in St. Luke's Gospel 10, 19, when it says, Behold, I give unto you power. The word power there is actually exousia, which is better translated as authority. What the Yoruba will call ashe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, authority. And we said authority is the right to exercise dominion. It's the right to exercise dominion. It's the right to be able to demand. Hallelujah. To demand something. To instruct, to command. Praise the Lord. All right, to demand, to command. Amen. We see, um, last week we began to look at um, two expressions of authority where we talked about authority to tread. Hallelujah. And authority against. I don't know if you remember that. Authority to tread and authority against. In Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you authority to tread. Hallelujah. To tread, to trample on serpent and scorpions. Serpent and scorpions there are metaphorical expressions for evil spirits and demons. Evil spirit and demons. Praise God. Evil spirit and demons. How do we know that? Because if you read in context in Luke chapter 10, all right, from verse 1, Jesus had sent his disciples to preach the gospel and to cast out devils. In verse 15, he says, and, and thou Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven and shall be thrust down to hell. This is Luke 10, 15. In 16, he says, he that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despiseth you, despiseth me, and he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Now, verse 17, everybody, we want to go, he says what? And the 70 did what? Returned with what joy saying lord even what the devils are subject unto us through what thy name 18 and he said unto them i beheld satan as what lightning fall from what from heaven behold i give unto you what power to tread on what serpents and scorpions so you can see in context what is being discussed what is being discussed is satan demonic spirits evil spirits Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Look at Matthew chapter number 10. You, as a believer, you need to know that you have authority against demonic spirits. You have authority against demonic spirits. This service is going to be quite practical because I'm going to be going into some places. <laughs> you have authority against. So you see, when it comes, when it talks about against, it means you can collide with demonic forces. Matthew 10. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 10 and verse 1. All right. Matthew chapter number 10 and verse 1. Can we read 1, 2, go? What does it say? Unto her. He gave them what? Power. Against what? 
unclean spirits. He gave them power against unclean spirits. There are different kinds of spirits in the kingdom of darkness. All right, we have different descriptions of demonic spirits in the Bible. You have unclean spirits. You have evil spirits. You have spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity is used to describe the operations of devils in sickness and disease. All right, evil spirit, all right, is describing the character. The word evil actually can also be translated as wicked spirits. All right, wicked spirit in the Greek is poneros. They are wicked, they don't have any consideration for anybody. They are wicked. These are spirits that, all right, can cause the father to die, the mother to die, the children to die, wipe out the entire family. They are wicked spirits. Praise God. You know, you can't be dealing with the devil and be saying, please. The devil does not hear, please. Are you following? The, 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 and the constitution of this spirit is wickedness. Praise God. So it tells us that he gave them what power against unclean spirits. To cast them out and to what? Heal all manner of what? Diseases, sicknesses, and all manner of what? Of disease. What this Matthew chapter 10 shows us is that a lot of times sickness and disease is tied to the presence of demonic spirits. Are you following? Are you following? You can never go wrong when healing the sick if you first start out by casting out devils. Are you, you understand? Now, not all, all sickness is actually tied to the presence of a demonic spirit. Some are, you know, due to natural, you know, um, disorder, all right? But there is an intelligence behind most, um, you know, most sicknesses and diseases. So, you find out that with casting out of devils, glory to God, you find that most times people will be healed. So, you see that Jesus sends his disciples to preach, but he doesn't let them go without giving them authority over on unclean spirits because if they have authority over unclean spirit then they can heal the sick look at mark 16 one of the signs of then by belief you find out the very first sign even before tongues the very first sign in mark 16 and 17 it says and this sign shall follow them that what that believe in my name they shall what they shall what they shall what cast out devils Cast out devils. They shall expel devils. Now, it is very important for us to pay attention to the fact that the very first sign had to do with the relationship of the believer with devils. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe they shall cast out devils. They shall cast out devils. Because you will not be able to fulfill God's agenda on the earth if you are not able to have authority over devils. Because your first opposer is the devil. In fact, the word devil means an opposer or an accuser. So the devil or Satan is someone that stands in opposition to God. That's who the devil is. So if you are not able to cast him out, you are not going to be able to make progress in what God has called you to do. So he says, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall expel devils. They shall cast out devils. Glory to God. Now you are able to cast out devils because you have what? Authority. Now let us go back to Ephesians chapter number 2. Remember we said that Jesus has been exalted and he sits at the right hand of God. And we said the right hand of God is not the right hand side of God. It's not talking about right and left. Praise the Lord. The right hand of God is the place of what? Power. The place of dominion. Hallelujah. So look at it again. Ephesians chapter number 2. And from verse 5. He is who she of the part. Ephesians 2 and verse 5. Look at what it says. He says, even when we were dead in sins, all right, had quickened us together with Christ. Notice. He had quickened us, we are, together with Christ. Now, this is now talking about identification, which means that whatever Christ is, we are. As he is, so are we in this world. So, as a Christian, if you want to know who you are, you draw your identity from who? Church, talk to me. 
Maybe I should come down. I'm too far. You draw your identity from who? Talk to me. You draw your identity from who? From Christ. So if you want to define you, you don't define yourself based on your own natural tendencies. You define yourself based on who? Of, on Christ. Because in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, he says, As he is, so are we, we are in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. In fact, the, the expression baptism, when you see baptism, it's talking about oneness. Whoever you are baptized into, you have become one with. Because the word baptism means to immerse. Hallelujah. Baptism is from the Greek word baptizo. And baptizo means to immerse. So, for example, when he says, if any man be in Christ, he's saying, if any man is baptized, we are into Christ. If any man is made what? One with Christ. He is a what? New creation. So that means the man who has believed in Jesus has been immersed, has been submerged into Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Galatians 3.27, he says, As many of us as have been, what? Baptized into Christ Jesus, we have done what? Put on Christ. So that means we've put on Christ. We have been made one with Christ. Hallelujah. Because we believe in him. So you cannot separate Christ from us. His name is our name. His spirit is our spirit. His family is our family. His father is our father. His blessing is our blessing. His office is our office. His position is our position. Are you following what I'm saying here? You cannot call us by a name different from Christ. Praise God. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit with him. One spirit, one entity with him. So when I ask, who are you? You must not respond with any identification that is outside of him. Because whatsoever identification you have right now is temporal. If you're a medical doctor, you will not be a medical doctor in heaven. If you're a Q and S, you are not going to be a Q and S in heaven. If you are a market woman or market man, you're not going to be a market woman or market man in heaven. If you Praise God. Now, Whatever you respond, that's not an identification you have forever. Because when you leave this earth, you cease to be that thing. Are you following? But your identification in Christ is forever. What you are in Christ, you are forever. It's irreversible. It is only the reaction between the spirit of a man and the spirit of Christ that is irreversible in this earth. Salvation is an irreversible reaction. Glory to God. Irreversible reaction. Whosoever God has claimed, no other person can claim it. Whosoever life has claimed, death cannot claim it. Why? Because if God takes a hold of something, the eternal God takes a hold of that thing eternally. He cannot do anything that is time-bound because he is not a time-bound God. An eternal God will give eternal gifts. An eternal God will save eternally. An eternal God will deliver eternally. An eternal God will make men what they are eternally. Are you following? So, a man, or, a man in Christ is a son for how long? Eternally. He is saved for how long? Eternally. He is delivered for how long? Eternally. He is the temple of God for how long? Eternally. If it is not eternal, it didn't come from God. Praise God. So that's why in Romans 11 it says, the gift and the callings of God are what? Without repentance. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have what? Eternal life. Hebrews 5, 8. All right, he says what? And he is the captain of salvation to as many, and he is the captain of eternal salvation to as many, all right, that, of them that what? Obey him. So you see, because he's an eternal God, he only gives eternal what? Gift. Which also means that if we have been raised together with Christ and we sit out, we are sitting at the right hand of God in Christ, it means that that position and that office is an eternal position. Praise the Lord. We can't retire from it. Glory to God. We cannot be sacked from it. Praise God. Because we were not, it was not by our works we sat there or we sit there. We are seated there by grace. Let's just go back. I said, even when we are dead in sins, at quickened us what? Together with Christ. By grace, you are what? Saved. Next verse. Hallelujah. Next verse. Not, all right, and as well together and made us sit 
together in heavenly places in what? In Christ Jesus. So that means we are sitting together. So when Christ sits, we sit. Now let me show you another place. Romans 6. Pay attention. Romans 6. Listen to me. The job of a New Testament pastor to believers is to ensure that their identity is rooted in Christ, not in anything else. Are you following? Identity is rooted in Christ, not in anything else. Because, for example, let's just say a believer maybe has a, an issue with demonic oppression. Or maybe in their family, certain generational patterns repeat themselves. Do you understand? Now, the way the New Testament minister minister to that believer is very important. Because if you deliver that person, okay, and that person is free from demons, but in the process of delivering the person from whatever influence that person was under, that person now had the identity, their consciousness, their, their, their identity tainted in such a way that they no longer see themselves as sons and kings with authority over the devil. You have made the thing worse. You have to ensure you cast that devil out without tampering with that person's understanding and consciousness of who they are in Christ. I don't know whether anybody understands what I've just said. I might even understand what I've just said. All right? So, for example, you want to deliver a person and you now get the person, the person is free, then the person now becomes afraid of devils. You have done something wrong. You have not ministered as a New Testament minister. Are you following what I'm saying? Come on, are you following what I'm saying? Very important. So that is why the identity the believer has is the most important thing to God. The consciousness of being a son is very, very important. You must never, ever project into the consciousness of a Christian that he is under, that he is subject, hallelujah, and that he is at the mercy of the devil, or that he is at the mercy of curses, or that he is at the mercy of witches. And no, 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 sir, not in Christ. Because whatever the believer is subject to, you have made Christ subject to. Hallelujah. Because Christ is who the believer is. In fact, the name of the believer is Christ. Bible calls him the temple of God. He said, what communion at what? The temple of God, all right? The temple of Christ with Satan. Praise God. The believer is the temple of Christ. He's joined to the Lord. Now look at Romans chapter 6. To show you again identification and how that ha oh, we as believers have been joined with the Lord. Here, yeah, let me just remind you. I'm if you are aware of Charismatic Renewal Conference. All right, Charismatic Renewal Conference. That conference is coming up over Easter. Praise God. April 1st is the pre conference service. Then, April 2nd and 3rd, that's the main service where we're going to be using um, Nikoms Event Center in Yaba. All right, we're going to be there all day. Friday, all day Saturday is impartation, training, prayer. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Amen. So when I say open Romans 6, verse 1. Oh, we start from verse um, 4. You are joined with Christ. So it will affect how you pray. Amen. So for example, do you know, guys, listen. Do you know when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus? Do you know what you're saying? You, are saying, you know, I told you last week that when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, or you are using the name of Jesus, what you're saying is that you are coming in the name of the office of the Son, the office of the one who sits where? At the right hand of the Father. Remember I told you that? Remember I told you that? So many times, that, that also means, that has implications. So when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are saying, Father, in the name of the one I am united with. Father, in the name of the one I am one with. It is why Satan can use the name of Jesus. Because he is not one with him. It is why unbelievers cannot use the name of Jesus. Because they are not one with the name. Are you following? You see, when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are not... Listen, the power in the name of Jesus is not in the mentioning of the name. No. The power in the name of Jesus is first and foremost in being one with that person. Being one with the name. So that's why I can function in the name of Jesus without saying in the name of Jesus. Are you following? I can see a sick person and I will just lay my hands on the person. The person will be healed. I have healed that person in the name of Jesus, but I didn't mention the name. The Bible in Philippians chapter 2 did not say at the mention of the name of Jesus, heaven is about. No. He said at the name of Jesus. Praise God. At the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a place. The name of Jesus is a location. Praise God. Whosoever is one with Jesus, whosoever is located in Jesus, all knees bow. All tongues confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
So we are one with Jesus. Say aloud, I'm one with Christ. Lift your hands and say, I'm one with Christ. I will never be separated from Christ. Louder, I will never be separated from Christ. Now look at this. It says in Romans 6, 4. Therefore, listen. Notice. It says, therefore. No, let's back up to you are crucified with him. In verse 3. Okay? He said, listen. Notice the, the construction. Paul's words are very intentional. He wants us to see ourselves one with Jesus in his death, one with Jesus in his burial, one with Jesus in his resurrection. Because if we are not one with him in his death, if we are not one with it in his burial, if we are not one with him in his resurrection, then we cannot be one with him in his glory. Hallelujah. You understand? So if we identify him with him when he was on the cross and we identify with him or we are identified with him in the burial and the resurrection, then we, hallelujah, are identified with him in glory. All right? At the Father's right hand where he has all authority. So he says, know ye not that so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, that is born again, we're baptized into what? His death. Praise God. Look at verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into what? Death. That like as Christ, hallelujah, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? In newness of life. The newness of life is resurrection life. Glory to God. Next verse. He now says in verse 6. Oh, verse 5. Uh, no, uh, uh, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his what? Of his resurrection. Verse 6 now says, What? Knowing this, that our what? Talk, talk to me. That our what? Old man. Now, your old man is not your papa. Glory to God. Oh, so my old man. It's not coming with your dad. <laughs> I remember one time, friend, I said, Spiritual babes always have issues with talking correctly. All right? Now, this guy, when he heard spiritual babes, thought that I was talking about women. So he responded, Oh, yes, that's true. I mean, I found that to be so. That's babes, even at this video, you know how you have to talk. I was like, Sorry, what? <laughs> So, you have to explain old man before you say the old man is your dad. Amen. So, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be what? Done away with, destroyed, that henceforth we should not what? Serve sin. Now, this old man, what is he talking about? He's referring to you before Christ. Amen. You know the you that was cursed? That's the old man. You know the you that was a sinner? That's the old man. You know the you? You know the one that was in darkness? That's the old man. He said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. That word destroyed means paralyzed. He said that henceforth, we should not what? Serve sin. Why? He's telling you this because he's saying in that the whole man has been what? Destroyed. In that the body of sin has been paralyzed. It means sin no longer has power over you. So he says for he that is dead is what? Freed from sin. So if sin does not have authority over you, it means the devil does not have authority over you. Amen? If sin doesn't have authority over you. It means whatsoever curse, whatsoever negative pronouncement that is of this world, whatsoever thing that belongs to the kingdom of darkness has no authority over you. Praise God. You say, Pastor, eh, we have this thing in our family. This something, something happened. Oh, let us have special prayers. Special prayers concerning it. There's nothing wrong praying about it. But it depends on how, it, it, there's a lot that depends on how we are praying about it. Praise God. How are you praying about it? Oh God, deliver me, deliver me from the... God should deliver you from what? From what? Deliver you from what? Deliver you from what? He should come and deliver you again from what? Colossians chapter 1. We'll come back here. Deliver you from what? Oh, Allah, we should be. You know? God should help me talk to the devil. You are wasting your time. That's why the thing has not changed. God is not going to talk to the devil for you. Amen? He will not. God is not going to talk to the devil for you. Uh-uh. No. Look at Colossians 1.12. Everybody read. One to go. It says what? 
Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us what? Which has made us what? That word meets there is qualified. He has made us qualified to be what? Partakers of the inheritance of the saints we are in life. Next verse. He says, who hath what? Delivered us. From what? Come on, talk to me. Who had delivered us from what? Did he say he will deliver us? Is he in the process of delivering us? He said, who had delivered us? Delivered is in past tense. He had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us onto what? The kingdom of Jesus. Which means that if you are under any oppression of darkness, that oppression is illegal. You understand? It is what? Listen. It is only the subject of a king that that king can punish legally. The moment he wants to punish the subject of another king, all right, and wants to behave as a king, glory to God, to a subject of another king, that king has become an oppressor. Are you following? He has become what? An oppressor. And the king, glory to God, of that kingdom can take the actions of this king as an act of what? War. You are not under the kingdom of darkness. Praise God. Whenever things happen, Amen. Listen, something happened. It's not consistent. You just say, ah, they said there is a cancer in your body. Or they said something is growing somewhere. All right? Or consistent, you know, everything, everything is just falling apart. You understand? You just say, ah, wait, wait. You check again. Which kingdom am I in? Just confirm. I'm in the kingdom of light. Where is this one coming from? Praise God. Where is this one coming from? Get angry. You don't pray. You don't, it's not prayer, God, deliver me. It's a prayer of anger. Hallelujah. What is this doing here? It's like this, guys. How many of you have ever gone to your parlor and you saw a rat inside the parlor? You saw a rat. How many of you have seen that one? You saw a rat. Now, was your reaction to come to the, this thing and say, God, deliver me from the rat? Or you sat in the parlor, maybe you're watching film. You sit down, you're watching Netflix. Then all of a sudden, you went as you were watching. One mosquito sat on your, this thing, on your face and beat you. Pam. The other one, pam. Ah, there's mosquito in this place. Is that not what happens? The Amma of now begin to pray, Father Lord, deliver me from the flies. Is that what you say? Do you hold a vigil and say, Deli Oh God, come down, deliver me from the mosquito. Oh Lord, come down, deliver me from the flies. Holy Ghost, fire, deliver. Is that what you do? Is that what, if you do that, you, it will bite you since the morning. Praise God. What do you do? Because you do not see the mosquito as superior to you, right? You know that there are things available to help you take care of mosquito. So what do you do? You go and get fleets, right? You get raid and you what? You spray the place. Is that not what you do? Come on. Is that not what you do? Why do you do that? Because you have an understanding, all right, that that place is your place. You didn't rent it for you a mosquito. It was for you to sleep and you want to rest without mosquitoes. In that same way, whenever you sniff oppression in your life, hallelujah, you will rise up as a son of God as you are, and you say, the devil, Satan, no more. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, get out! Praise the Lord. And that is where the place of speaking in tongues is important. As you have issued decrees in the name of Jesus, you maintain with tongues. Glory to God. Now, what are you doing when you are speaking in tongues? As you are speaking in tongues, you are searching in the realm of the spirit if there is something extra, hallelujah, to be seen, something extra to be heard, or something extra to be said. Because the Bible calls the, the word of God in your mouth the sword of the spirit in Ephesians 6. He says, oh, glory to God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, should I teach you spiritual warfare? Praise the Lord. Should I teach you spiritual warfare? Okay. See, in spiritual warfare, the first step is identity. That's number one. Number one. Number one. You cannot deal with Satan if you don't know who you are. That's number one. That is the first thing. You have a lot of believers who have been made sons, but they are trying to contend as slaves. They talk like slaves in prayer. Talk nonsense. Yeah? You understand? Talk nonsense. You marine spirit that is over my life. Marine spirit over your own life. Do you know what you're saying? Over your life. You marine spirit that is over my life. I can't be sucking like that. Do you understand? If you are oppressed by 
a water spirit or not, like, over your life. No. You come, I am born again. I am a son of God. You dirty, smelling, demonic, unclean spirit. Get out! Praise God. They have to go. That boldness in using authority stems from understanding who you are. Number one, you must know, I am a son of God. You must be convinced of it. You must first of all understand that you have authority in Christ and that heaven backs you up. That your words cannot fall to the ground. It is impossible. Are you following? It's not possible. I said it. It cannot fail. Amen? You must have that. Listen, there's a level of faith you get to people who say you are arrogant. Let them say it. So far you get results, it's fine. Amen? My words cannot fall to the ground. Amen? They, it cannot. It cannot fall to the ground. You say, out in Jesus' name. So, the first thing is identity. Who are you in Christ? Number one, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become what? The righteousness of God in him. Do you know why it's important for you to know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Because the twofold weapon of the devil that he uses in warfare are guilt and what? Condemnation. Guilt and what? Condemnation. Two things. So when you start praying, one thing the devil does, the first arrow of fire, fire is the arrow of guilt. He reminds you of a sin you committed, something you did, something you said, and things like that. He will now begin to make you think that the reason why you are having this oppression is because of something you did or something you said and things like that. Trying to make you accept that you are at fault for the problem. Hear me and hear me well. Listen to me. Whenever you do something wrong, sorry, whenever you find yourself in a hard fix, the first thing God comes to do is not to tell you what you are doing wrong. He so first of all take you out of the problem. Praise the Lord. When Lazarus died, did Jesus get there and say, Ah, Lazi? Man, wow. Hey, your faith was too weak. How can you allow sickness to kill you? Did this? No, he first brought him out. Glory to God. So what the devil always does in his arsenal, guilt and condemnation. If you can allow and accept guilt and condemnation, do you know the next thing that is coming? Fear. Once fear gets in the place, Satan has the right to exercise whatever he wants to do. Because fear gives the devil permission to enter into your life, just as faith gives the permission for God to have ent entrance into your life. Fear is faith in the devil's ability. Glory to God. That's what fear is. Glory to God. Fear is faith in reverse. Faith takes you forward. Fear takes you backward. Satan needs you in fear. To get you in fear, he introduces condemnation and guilt. Unfortunately, a lot of pastors are actually PR agents of the devil. Because many people come into church and they live more afraid of curses and devils and all of those things and witches and wizards than ever. So what has happened is as they are walking away from church, instead of them to be walking free and seeing themselves seated far above, principalities and far, they see themselves as mates or juniors to this nonsense. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's say this thing. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I have authority. I have authority. I have authority in the name of Jesus against demonic forces. Glory to God. You will make Papa proud. Look at him and say, I make Papa proud. I'm talking of Papa God. I make Papa God proud. Glory to God. Remember in Luke 10, listen. In Luke 10, Jesus had given his disciples authority. Then they went, they preached. Then they cast out devils. Then they came back and they told Jesus, ah, Jesus, even the devils were subject to us through your name. Hallelujah. Next thing we find in Luke 10, 21, the Bible says Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Ghost. And he said, oh Lord, you kept these things from the rich and the mighty and you have revealed it to what? Babe, say aloud, I will make Papa God proud. I will make Papa God dance. Hallelujah. When you cast out devils, and you face body. Jesus is saying, look at my boy. Look at my daughter. Look, just look at her. Just, just, just look at, look at mama. Look at, look at, look. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, all right, you need to know who you are. First thing you need to know, you need to know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God took your place 
of sin and gave you his righteousness free of charge. Romans 5.17. All right? Righteousness is a gift. You didn't earn it. Righteousness is too expensive, so God gave it free. Righteousness is too expensive. God gave it free. You cannot earn righteousness. I am not more righteous than you. All right? I can walk in righteousness better because of being trained, being taught, and knowledge. But I do not have more righteousness than you. You don't even grow in righteousness. Righteousness is a gift free of charge. Free of charge. It is a gift given and it is not withdrawn. God does not withdraw his gift. The gifts and callings of God are without what? Repentance. So if it is a gift and it is of God, it is what? Irrevocable. And God does not change his mind afterward, giving it. God has declared, anyone that believes in Jesus, I have given him my... I have given him my... Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 17. Everybody would want to go. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, they which receive what? And of the what? Shall what? Hey! Righteousness. Righteousness is the ability, write this down. Righteousness is the ability to stand before God without any consciousness of sin. Hallelujah. Without any consciousness of sin, without any consciousness of sin, inferiority, guilt, or condemnation. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. It is the ability conferred by God upon a man that makes man approach boldly, knowing he has access to God. Righteousness also is equity. It is the privilege given only to citizens of a kingdom. It means because I'm righteous, I have standing with God, I have access. I have rights and I have privileges. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So listen, when it comes to spiritual warfare, you must be bold. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a what? Talk to me. The righteous is as bold as a what? Is as bold as a what? Now, lions, when they, bo- they are attacking and they are bo- what do they do? They roar. It means that speech is one of the signs, all right, of what? Of boldness. So the man who is bold does not approach warfare with his mouth shut. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Let me give you one example. Uh, let me give you some words. There was this man of God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> there was a time when I was, I, I was in CAC, all right, so there was this man of God, the prophet of God, so he was, you know, in his church, and uh, there was a girl who was possessed, and so the prayer squad, how many of you know say prayer squad, you know, prayer squad gathered around and were casting out the devil from the girl, so as we were casting out the girl, the devil from the girl, the girl began to manifest. And as she was manifesting, she now began to call out the sins of the people, right? So she was like, Brother Joe, not our Joe, hello. Brother Joe, all right? You that was sleeping with Sister Cynthia. So, like so basically, she was saying that only somebody that had no sin could cast her out. Ah, and you know what's happening? And she called Brother Joe, but that Joe moved back, and everybody was like this thing. You understand? And the lady was now saying, and the demon spirit was now saying, Ah, you I can't talk to you, I can't deal with any one of you. Go and call Baba. So they had to call Baba. Baba now can cast the devil, and the devil went. Should I tell you what was going on with all those other people? They were ignorant. Listen to me. It is not your sin or your righteousness that determines casting out the devil, it is his name. He says, in my name they shall what? Cast out what? Devils. Not in their righteousness they shall cast out devils. So what normally happens is, in spiritual warfare, whenever you are going against the devil, the devil is going to try to attack you based on one unrighteous thing or the other to get you into that place of guilt and condemnation. Because he knows if he introduces guilt and condemnation and you accept it, you will move from boldness and you go to where? Fear. In fear, you can't deal with Satan. The moment you enter fear, you can forget it. You cannot deal with Satan. You can't. You know, some people that they are praying and it's fear. Come out, oh, in. they are afraid. Jesus! 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 
<laughs> Praise God. One more time I was on a plane then. There was turbulence in the plane. Come on, yeah. Jesus! <laughs> when the Muslims start shouting Jesus, you know something is up. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's not going to work. It's not the mention of the name that comes commands power. No. Amen. No. No. You need to have knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to have what? Knowledge. Say that with me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I boldly declare I am a son of God. Louder. I boldly declare I am a son of God. Hallelujah. When you're dealing with the devil, don't deal with the devil like this. Deal with the devil like this. Praise God. Huh? He is not your equal. Ephesians 1. What kind of rubbish is that? God and Ishu are not with. Neither is Ishu and you. Praise God. Ephesians 1.17. And we're going to read into 21 downwards. Borakalika subre Lucian Pavaratati Orapash Eratura Minomberata Arame Suke Firen O Sivratigas Tiriato Waurie Pafam Palaro Palire Suzi Manano Huramandi Kistaradu Fara Ashide Ira Akalio Ufara Pastun Pastin Susivara Tumba Ka arda noste la isteria non de sigis. Glory to God. Now, this is what the Lord said. He said, I have made you, I have given you, and I've positioned you into all you need for life and godliness. So take up, take hold, and run. Take up, take hold, and run. Do not shrink back. Do not be dozer, but run knowing that I have given to you. Run, knowing that my word is true. My word is true and will not fail. My word is true and there is no lie present. And there is no lie present. And there is no lie present. And you shall see the manifestation of my glory that already abides in you on all the surface of the earth. Says the Spirit of God to you. Praise the Spirit of God to you. Wabina wakumba shiaria na a osi akadia ma vikandro os ukize kilamino vrupi fa kilama jikete umpanti supradina la ardi gesto ise para agi sumpanini igumi fra akustra ya ardia o kofre o kofra mi na aratakush zu zu ivina mina kozo zeleo raki sukaritari hajidi kisu papa hallelujah the realm of the spirit is your realm yes says the lord for you are born even of the holy ghost you are born even of the holy ghost you do not need a medium to assess your realm you do not need a medium or a token to assess your realm, says the Lord. By opening up your mouth and speaking, that realm opens up to you, says the Lord. Grow in knowledge concerning all I have given you in my spirit, all I have given you through my spirit, and where I have placed you in my spirit. And as you do that, you will see a manifestation of all that is in, upon, with you, in me, says the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The days are here. Lent short legs will grow out. Short hands will grow out. Missing organs will be replaced. Tumors will melt. Tumors will melt. I said tumors will melt. Tumors will melt. Blood pressure normalize. Blood pressure normalize. Blood pressure normalize. Blood pressure normalize. We will heal people across hundreds of kilometers by speaking the word. By speaking the word. We will command blind eyes opened by praying over the phone. By praying over the phone. Whenever they hear our voice, 
the angelic is released. Whenever they hear our voice, the power of God is released. You are healing people via WhatsApp messages. Voice. You just voice it. You just voice it. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Praise God. Righteousness. Consciousness of your righteousness. You know, you say, Satan, you cannot refuse me. When he brings up a sin, oh boy, I think it was Pastor Chris that was talking about something. He was under the cast out the devil, all right, and the devil was trying to bring up, say, I can't, I, you can't cast me out, something, 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 something. All right? Then I said, devil, listen, you are coming out of this person now in the name of Jesus. About whatever sin you are quoting, that's a personal matter. It's a family issue between me and my father. It does not concern you. Get out! <laughs> What's the difference? Knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. 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 That's the difference. Praise God. Now, look at Ephesians 1, 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ... The Father of glory may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints. Next verse. All right. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power uh, towards what? Who believe? According to the what? Working of his mighty power. Next verse. Which he walked in Christ. When he what? Raised him from the dead and set him at his own what? Right hand in heavenly places. So the power at work in us is resurrection power. Amen. Praise God. All right. So, all right. He said, Far above what? Talk to me. Far above what? All principality. And what? And power. And what? And might. And dominion and every name that is what named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Go on, next verse. He now says, And put all things where under where under his feet. The devil is not your equal, he's under your feet. Tell me, the devil's not my equal, he's under my feet. Hallelujah. Authority is by ranking, by rank. I see your sita. In fact, in the kingdom of God, Satan has no rank. Praise God. Understand what I'm telling you. Listen, the reason why you can cast him out is because he does not have authority in the kingdom. Praise God. Angels are sent forth. Devils are cast out. Are you following? You send forth someone who is under authority. You cast out someone who is not under authority. So devils are not under authority, so they are for casting out. Are you following? Glory to God. There's something going on in your house. They say this, are, I mean, they are people, oh, yes, oh, Jesus. There are some folks, I mean, I heard about a story about a man, all right, who is 49, he has not married, all right? People don't, the males don't marry in their house. They don't marry. They want to enter a relationship. Something will happen. The lady will complain. Ah, I'm in relation with this person. You, uh, uh, you understand? Because there are some demonic spirits. They are wicked. See, if you don't know who you are and you don't understand the word God, Satan will finish you. Ah. Will finish you. You will just find out. Your daughter will just wake up one day, 15 year old. You will now say you want to marry 30 something year old person. Oh my, you just come and follow him. But 15, she's SS1. She now wants to be, you just find out. Know, the second daughter, too, you just follow him and up and down. What is going on now? Before I know it, daughter one is 16, she's pregnant. And the man has run away. He doesn't want to, no, daughter two, you now be saying, is he upbringing? No, he's Satan. There is some that is upbringing. Then there's some is Satan. Hallelujah. Satan. So, like that. You are dating you, your own relationship. It's crazy people that always come your way. They are always, they are always not normal. Where normal people are around, they don't used to find you. Praise the Lord. And you check it. It's your sister too. All of, so all of you will now form a WhatsApp group. What is going on with this man? He's listening. You better pray. Hallelujah. I remember there was someone like that. You know, <laughs> a few like that. <laughs> One lady came. He said, Pastor, what do we have to help me? What's going on? He said, Pastor, I am almost 30 and no guy has ever asked me out. Like, come to see Sister Kila in town there. You understand? <laughs> what, what is happening? No. I, ah! Like, you are fine. You are beautiful. I am, you know, I'm being, you know. I'm like, ah. 
And I checked the lady out. She didn't look like a gorilla. She's fine. She's a beautiful person. You understand? She's fine. Now, it's, not, it's different to me that maybe she meet people and say, I, I don't want to, you understand, because I, I'm waiting for God's will. There's that. It's okay. Don't go and rush this thing. But no one had ever said, hello. Ah! Ah, kilo, ah! What? Nobody? Ah, no. Mm-mm. So he said, let's go and pray. So we prayed. You had the video. All right? And it was in that video, you know, some things were revealed. We thought the nonsense of the way she got married, it was very funny. I mean, it was a very funny, <laughs> you know. You know, there's, we won't let us date, you know. No, guy came. I want to marry. I want to marry in six months. Are you game? You understand? Then after I'm going abroad, you see. So, so, <laughs> so, because our prayer was, she didn't want long courtship. I don't want long courtship. No, not those ones. We go on 25 days. Mm-mm. No interested. Cake up and down. Mm. Just come. I, I love you. We, like, we love each other. We will discover the rest after. You understand, but... <laughs> so, <you understand? laughs> Hallelujah. so the problem was not her. It was something else. You must know you are. Learn it. See, listen to me. Learn it. Learn it. Learn this thing I'm telling you. Learn to wage war. Learn it. Don't permit oppression anywhere near you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Don't permit it. Now, how do you wage war? You wage war with words. All right? I, we, you know, we, we, anyway, I've learned not to try to preach the entire sermon. All right? If you come next week, you will continue. We continue. I expect that you will come so, because we are continuing. There's a lot to learn. All right? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Now, listen. You wage war with words. Ah, words. You have to learn it. You know, you have to learn it. Um... Praise God. You have to learn it. You have to learn it. Amen? You have to learn it. Let's see. Let's look at that married thing. Like the lady I talked about. After we cast out the thing out, broke the other thing, I told her what to see. So whenever she called and she was like, hey, um, something, you want to complain, I'm beginning to get into unbelief. I said, eh, don't go into unbelief. Don't you go there. Don't you let it come out of your mouth. Like I said in first service today in Sri Lanka Church, I said it is better to be dumb than to speak unbelief. Zachariah's example shows us that. When the angel came and told him you would, you know, this was happening, the moment he started talking unbelief, what did the angel he shut his mouth? Why? It is better for this one to, you know, notice what happened was the angel made him dumb, didn't make him deaf. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. So he put, dumb, shut up. Don't speak unbelief and spoil God's plan concerning John the Baptist. All right? So he kept on and kept on. He can continue hearing. So he kept on hearing. But he couldn't see. Praise God. Until John the Baptist was born. And here we are. Talk. And you know, what did he say? He said his name shall be called John. And so now he was believing. Learn from Zachariah. Ensure that you, if you cannot speak faith, shut up. Shut up. Pastor, can't we talk about feelings? Feelings fire you there. We are talking warfare. We are talking feelings. What are you talking about? We are saying you are in a war. You are saying feelings. It's like you are in a battle. But bullets are flying everywhere. And you say, you see, I feel like you. Oh, you feel. You feel. Eh? Okay. Now let's do what we feel in the battlefield. Now you know. Just put a jacuzzi there where bullets are flying. We feel. No. You learn it. Praise God. God called you into ministry is warfare. There's battle to fight. You want to get married? Warfare. You are in the marriage? There's warfare. There's no picnic. Anything that is kingdom, anything that is of God, it takes warfare to maintain it. Warfare. Enforcing the victory of Christ with words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you say, in the mighty name of Jesus, you want to get married? In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against any contrary force, against my marital fulfillment. I 
command you out in the name of Jesus. You are talking like that. You have no role in my life. You have no place in my life. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Are you following me? You have no role. No place. I yield you no space in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then you now begin to speak as a king. I declare in the name of Jesus. Within the next 365 days, I will be settled mar- maritally. I go into my children and I declare my pregnancies are normal. They are safe. I put to bed normally. In the name of our Lord. You understand? You're talking like that. You're saying in the name of Jesus, money comes to me now. In the name of Jesus, my business is settled. My career is settled. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your angels have been discharged to cause all my words to come to pass. It shall not fail. It shall not fail. It shall not fail. Praise God. Praise God. Then you enter into the realm of saying what you want to see, not saying what you see. Hallelujah. What you want to see. And going with a tribe that understand that kind of communication. What is the point? Saying you want to be on fire. Like a friend said. How can you say you want to be on fire and you are dating a fire in Sigwinsha? Glory to God. How can you say you are a woman and man and you are moving with folks who are too woke, glory to God, to choke the devil? Keep it, they are, they're keeping it real. My truth, your truth, every truth. No. You can't, you understand? The word. Hallelujah. So as you are speaking the word, you are slicing. You are slicing. You are slicing. You are cutting. You are cutting out anything that shouldn't be there. Praise God. Amen. In your business, take this word of the spirit there. In your career, take this word there. Enforce who you are in Christ there. Enforce your office. What is your office? Your office what? The office of what? The right hand. The office of the son. The son of the right hand. The son of power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where everything we say, the response is yes. And what? Amen. That's who we are. Glory to God. You family or anything, you go there. Glory to God. You pray. Now listen to me. When it comes to healing the sick, the faith of the person is important. Praise the Lord. So let them, you know, from the word of God. This is what the word of God says about the sickness. Hallelujah. This is what he says about the sickness. This is what he says about the disease. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then you pray for them in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of our Lord Jesus, cancer, I come against you. Hallelujah. You foul spirit, I command you out of this person's body now in Jesus' name. I curse you in the name of the Lord Jesus and I declare that the life is gone out of you now. You understand? You are speaking words. You cut at it. Praise God. You cut at it. Cut, cut, cut. If there is any sickness in your body, anything you have been battling for a long time. From the scriptures, I found out that whenever something remains for a long time, most likely the hand of the devil is there. Matthew 19. They say Jesus Christ came from, um, from the um, Mount of Transfiguration. And as he came from the tam- Mount of Transfiguration, they met him, a father, who was a child, all right, who had a seizure, and the devil threw him that, that child uh, severally. Then Jesus was what? Young. It was a devil. That's Matthew 17, sorry. Matthew 17. And Jesus cast out the devil out of that child, and the child was fine. They say, stop. Most, you must know, things that have a long lifespan, trouble that have been stubborn, they've been stubbornly there, and they've not gone, there's a devil there. Praise God. There's a devil. You cast it out in the name of the Lord Jesus. You, you, in the name of Jesus, you cannot stay here. Out in Jesus' name. And you stay out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every single day, you're out in Jesus' name. Whenever you seem, seem to have any symptom that is looking as though it resembles that oppression, you say, no, 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 devil. No, 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 no. You don't come back, you're out in the name of Jesus. Feelings are the, how will I put it? Feelings are the advertisements of the kingdom of darkness of what Satan is about to put on you. I don't know. I don't think you heard that. Feelings. What you feel? I feel this pain here. I feel this here. I feel this here. They are actually the way the devil advertises what he's about to put on you. When you have those feelings and you sense it, what do you do? You resist it in the name of Jesus. No, devil. You have no place here. No, Satan. You can't put this here in the name of Jesus. Get out! Praise God. Don't accommodate it. Don't give it room. Cast it out. 
Hallelujah. Say this with me. I have authority. I have authority. Louder. I have authority. I have authority. To resist. I have authority. I have authority. To expel. I have, I have authority. To make whole. I have authority. To heal. And to deliver. Come on, rise up on your feet. Let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Rise up, we are going to pray. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. Now say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I walk in dominion. I walk in power. In every area. In every sphere. Even right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and begin to declare. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.